Welcome to our second video on our series of mystery and suspense films. This week we're going to be discussing the 1999 film The Talented Mr. Ripley. I'm Michelle Hickey, director of Film and Paper Club, and we are a group of creatives who love talking about movies, television, books, eating snacks while we do so. And if you love all of those things too, I invite you to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up so you won't miss any of the videos like this that we release every Friday. Before we jump into our discussion, I need to give a spoiler warning. Uh, if you don't want to be spoiled and you have not yet seen The Talents of Mr. Ripley, I encourage you to go watch the film before taking part in our discussion. This film stars Matt Damon, who plays the titular Tom Ripley, and it is really interesting to watch this movie in the present, uh, so much after so much time has passed, and Matt Damon has starred in so many movies, uh, most of which he's been the hero of the story. And The Talented Mr. Ripley opens with Matt Damon as Tom Ripley, presented as our protagonist, which typically in a story, the first character that we see is the one that we immediately connect with. So it was kind of unnerving to go through the rest of this story and to see that character of Tom ultimately uh, turn out to be the villain in this story as he becomes more and more obsessed with Dickie Greenleaf's life, lifestyle with the person himself, and what that can do to a person, especially when you're a sociopath. This movie is so complex. It is so beautiful. I had seen it once before this rewatching, and my husband's memory is that after we watched it together that I was pretty disturbed by it. But the thing that I remember most about watching this movie is that it was so beautiful. This is a very uh, visually appealing movie. If you take all of the ugliness out of it, it is like a painting come to life. So I was really coming to this rewatch, remembering that, knowing that it was going to be a really visual experience. And immediately I began picking up on the many visual cues that exist in this film. In one of the first scenes in this film, we see Matt Damon with a Chet Baker jazz album. And on that cover, we see these bands of colors, which immediately caught my eye because those colors are then reflected in the credits, which I loved, which run uh, pretty deep into the movie. I think I have written a note that I think we're about eight minutes into the movie and the credits are, the opening credits are still running. And I'm guessing that they felt like that might be a cool thing to do because it wasn't just flashing names up on the screen that they were going to have these color bars and really setting the tone that we should be paying attention to color as we dive deeper into the story. Not to make a water pun. I mean, this discussion video could have gone in a whole different direction. Um, the amount of uh, water imagery that exists uh, in this film are plentiful. But we're going to be talking mostly about color today. We see Tom Ripley trying to learn about jazz music, and he takes out a blindfold, covers his eyes, and prompts himself to be able to identify the jazz music that's playing from his records. I don't know. I don't know. Dizzy Gillespie. And immediately the color of that blindfold was so striking to me. And I don't know what it was, but it caught my eye. It's a very um, kind of like a, a royal purpley blue. And I wrote that down. I wrote down blue blindfolds. And after that, it kind of opened up the floodgates and it became a game of I spy because the bus that Tom Ripley arrives in when he arrives in Italy is that exact same, very distinct blue color. And then we see this color come up again 
and again through about like the first third or so of the movie. We see Dickie wearing the blue collar as they are walking together and reading the letter from his father. The boat that Tom and Dickie take out on the water before that fateful moment when Tom kills Dickie is also that same shade of blue. We see it on the lining of the saxophone case. We see it in the ribbon of the gift that Tom gives to Marge after he has killed Dickie. It's the color that Marge wears to the opera. Maybe I am making more of this than it is. Maybe uh, if I had fixated on a different color, I would have noticed all the instance of, instances of it. But I think the thing that struck me the most was it, it was a very specific shade and I don't think that this color of blue is used very often, especially on things like buses. Not, I mean, obviously blue is a popular color, but not this like very purpley blue. But I knew for sure that it was significant as soon as Tom steps into Dickie's identity and then all of a sudden everything turns green, starting with that very memorable visual of him stepping into the apartment in Italy that is lined with this very rich green wallpaper. Obviously, uh, we were prompted with this green color that we associated with Dickie because it appeared on his ring, which of course comes back to play in a big way later in the story. But in this section, we are seeing this green color being shown over and over again. We see it in the Vespa that Tom is riding through the streets of Italy. And even as he's riding through the streets when he's going by the mirrors, which are another uh, big visual component of this story, we're seeing that green being reflected everywhere he goes. That is until Tom is pushed back into the very metaphorical, but also literal basement when he is hiding and needs to transform back into Tom Ripley. At this point of the movie, I'm not uh, I'm not second guessing myself anymore. I, I see for sure that color is a significant part of this storytelling. When the lights on his face flash back to that royal purpley blue color, and then he is he's back to wearing blue again. You see him wearing that very prominent blue color when he's talking to Dickie's father, and the green has all but disappeared. Now. I wish I had the answers for you. I kind of purposefully didn't Google this or look too far into it because I want to hear what you think. Clearly, uh, the filmmakers were trying to say something by using these colors, and it could have just been subtly setting up the parameters of Tom's journey, but I couldn't come up with a really good answer as to why specifically that blue color. The green Green is associated with envy. I mean, that could be the easy answer, but why that blue? So if you have any insights into this or um, guesses or interpretations, share them with me in the comments. Why this blue color? And also, did you also notice that? A Talented Mr. Ripley is certainly not the first film to use color in their storytelling because, of course, colors are meant to evoke feeling. And we as artists have the power to assign an even deeper meaning to those colors. If you're up for a creative exercise, something you might want to try is quite simply creating something using only two colors and just let yourself play with it. Whether you are, you know, painting something, drawing something, uh, creating a short film, maybe with, um, with color filters or even creating a, a social media graphic using only two colors, let yourself play, let yourself be creative and use your storytelling skills to use those colors in a way that's going to help you communicate the story that you're trying to tell. And I'd like to encourage you to think beyond literal representations of these colors. So if you're doing something that is showing something in nature and you know you would typically use earth tone colors like greens and browns, try using something totally off the wall like a, you know, a fluorescent pink or a fluorescent blue. How can you still communicate what you want to feel using a completely different color palette? Or how can you use the two colors together to play off one another, to create contrast or to 
create like a very clear division like we saw in the talent of Mr. Ripley with those greens and with those blues. If you create something cool that you want to share with us, please drop it in the comments below. I would love to see it. And if you enjoyed this discussion and you want to dive even deeper into the world of the beautiful, the talented Mr. Ripley, I invite you to check out our membership where every week we share accompaniments to this video that include food and drink pairing guides, a film guide that you can use to watch along and have discussions with your family and friends as you watch. If you join at our creator level, I also provide you with weekly creative prompts. And of course, all of it is inspired by the movies that we love and discuss here on this channel. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so that you won't miss out on any of our weekly videos. As we continue with our October theme of mystery and suspense, next week, we're going to be talking about Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. I'll see you guys then. And scene.